My name is uh, Vincent Heblink. I'm Head of Technology Incubation and Corporate Venturing at, uh, at Proximus. And I'll talk about our, our IoT and more specifically our uh, long range, low power uh, strategy and journey we've been through uh, during the last uh, 24 months. So from ID, from customer requests towards a commercial launch. And I'll illustrate this with a few use cases uh, that we've been launching in the market today and also looking forward into how we see this uh, evolving within the next months. Uh, good morning, everybody. So it's uh, really my pleasure to, to share the, the journey of Proximus with regards to, to LP1. Uh, hopefully uh, interesting for you. And actually, for those who didn't follow our rebranding, Proximus used to be called Belgacom. So we are the incumbent in Belgium as an introduction to that. So we often uh, speak about a revolution. So it's about revolution and the rapid deployment that we're talking about. So a revolution, of course, it's the thought, the mechanical, the automation, the internet. So the internet of thing, but not because of the, uh, the, the billion of objects we foresee, not because of the data it will gather, but because of the intelligence that will come out of it. So that's really what will, what will change. And we're really at the beginning because the objects are still uh, not connected. And by the way, if you imagine, all those billions of objects will have to be physically, manually connected. So there's still a lot of work to do that. Another aspect um, of the fact that it's a revolution that we really see an impact in, uh, in all the verticals. So most of the time we have those uh, specific verticals targeted, the, the verticals we target as well. Uh, but a small highlight on the uh, the engineering, uh, the the industri in industry, the automation of the industries, because that's um, a revolution for the telco. The telco used to be providing telecommunication services, also most of the time ICT services, but with the IoT, we will get really deep into the processes, into the manufacturing processes. This sector is not the most eager. To, uh, to get directly on the, the IoT train today. But I think that's the sector with the biggest potential, uh, biggest potential change. So we were uh, a few uh, years ago, two years ago, in this context, we are gathering, and we are in front of a revolution, an IoT revolution, and as a telco, we used to have our classical M2M service, but how do we approach it? And it's, it's, it was a general reflection also when uh, we had a CEO change as well about our innovation generally. So how do we approach those things? And um, one of the key principles we started with is indeed uh, to go through a lean circle. So um, the lean innovation, so to the build, measure, learn. So just try small, measure, learn, and, uh, and iterate. And that's really... Uh, how we've been through this uh, low power white area uh, story as well. We had another um, few uh, principles that were important for us to get quick and to answer uh, towards this revolution. It's first of all about the customer. So we started with demands from the customer we couldn't answer. Uh, I will get into a bit more details with regarding to this. Uh, this uh, picture there represent the fact that we need a light governance. So we did set up a specific governance much, uh, much faster that could uh, get to a quick, uh, a quick project deployment. A dedicated team, a ring-fenced budget. So important we had the, the own budget. And the last but not least, the support from uh, top management. So that's a picture of our CEO. So that was uh, really uh, key as well in this story. And then about the, um, indeed, the different uh, technology that we are facing. So that's exactly the, the moment where we, we were getting requests from the customer that we could not answer with what we had uh, at that time. And that's specifically in this uh, low power, long range. So we had to connect many very cheap objects, um, and we could not do that with our M2M solutions. So the Question came then, yes, so let's, uh, the question came from the customer who wanted to, to pilot those, how to, how to choose a technology, because we indeed have long range, short range options, uh, the licensed, unlicensed. And actually we, we tend to see now that uh, analysts tend to say that there is a market, uh, market for everything. So it, 
used to be important as well if you want to grab a part of the market to to be in all of those and that the solution at the end of the day was not the the the, the decision of which uh, technology to make was not was not that uh, that key at that point so we decided to 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 join uh, the LoRa at that time and the main reason was because it was there so we we had a we had a customer request and we wanted to try things out and there were things there um that, that, that were available, we uh, decided to join, uh, to join the alliance. It was back in 2015, so it was just starting. We used to be a, a founding member, and actually it, it grew quite, uh, quite impressively since then. Uh, also on the, the different uh, or national networks or smaller networks, because we are indeed, uh, what Laura is speaking about, an unlicensed uh, spectrum. So no need for, for a license grew uh, quite, uh, quite impressively not only about the networks, but the, the ecosystem as well. And so coming back to, the, to what the, the, the story we've been through at the end of 2014, we got this uh, go the green light from our executive committee to, to start the, the pilots with a few customers that we had uh, in the identified, um, specifically in the, in the smart building, uh, in the tracking uh, area as well. Uh, we had uh, those demands. With, like I said, uh, during the first half of uh, of 2015, chosen Laura because it was there, and we've then decided to launch uh, to, to to join the alliance and um, to launch an RFP to start this first deployment because we had really good feedback from uh, from those pilots, and we decided in July 2015 to do a national rollout. So it was not. We did not cover the entire country at that time, but the, the point was that we wanted to be big enough to really be considered as a key player into this area. Because what is really key there is that we realize that in unlicensed spectrum, you are competing with any service integrator that could go there, put uh, an antenna on the roof of the building of an industry and, and, and just uh, deploy the service. So it was really important to make quite a good, uh, a good noise and uh, be considered in the, the, the request that would come uh, from the market. Uh, we have been starting the deployment in August 2015 and announced uh, our commercial launch, our commercial product in uh, a little bit more than one year ago. So last year with um, the following uh, coverage. So like I said, we wanted to cover uh, the major cities, urban areas, also the logistic uh, centers, the, the harbors, the airports. Um, and that's how we, uh, we've been into the market by then. So this is uh, covering 50% of the population, although when you talk about IoT, the key uh, metric is not uh, always the population, it's about the objects that you want to cover. But um, apart from that, also 25% uh, of the territory. So it, it was just uh, at that time good enough to, to announce the deployment. I'll come later to, to where we are now. So um, by the end of this year, we'll have the, the country uh, covered. Uh, there is also, of course, an important aspect to look at is if you're covering outdoor, indoor, deep indoor, which is uh, important depending on the, on the use cases. So what, uh, what are we offering? Obviously, um, the connectivity. You start from the connectivity. That was also the, the, the start of our, of our thoughts when, when we're looking at the, uh, at, at the technologies. We always come back to, to what, what we know well. It's about the connectivity. But um, we wanted, indeed, to offer a complete uh, service towards our users. And we realized this is not something that uh, we could do alone. So I heard earlier today we have to to, to bet on, uh, on a vertical, so that's what uh, we are doing as well. But to go to the other verticals, uh, it's important to, to partner. So we are, beyond connectivity, offering uh, an IoT platform with added value services, but it, it is always also uh, giving some uh, transparent uh, uh, transparency towards the different uh, access technologies that we have. So you, another representation, you have the, the objects, the different kind of, uh, of access networks. So you, 
tend to be transparent to that. Uh, I think we had a discussion with Tele2 this morning. I heard them in the past. I was not there exactly uh, through the entire uh, discussion this morning, but uh, I think Tele2 has also an, uh, this kind of, um, of way to go to market. And uh, in the middle, you have indeed the, uh, the application part. With all the, the partners to which we addressed those different, different verticals we were, uh, we were discussing. Uh, I confess this is a bit a slide that is too too complicated. The message that I w want to pass here is that a very important target uh, group that we want to, uh, to to get as well to to address as well is the one of the uh, developers. So we realize that uh, we need also to have a complete a completely digitalized offer towards our IoT and other assets, I'll come back to that, but towards IoT as well. So you, you cannot only talk about an end-to-end -end solution. A lot of our customers, and certainly those who are starting their new solutions, because we are in a new market, but also the more uh, established one, also ask uh, digitalized access. So through APIs, they also want to, to access it. And this is um, reflected in our offer that we, we pushed into the market that is called ENCO. ENCO stands for Enabling Company. Uh, through the website has been launched um, a few weeks ago, since ENCO.io, and that's really the offer towards the, um, the developers in this market. So what are we doing there? Actually, uh, different assets, not only IoT, but we are also adding uh, cloud services, also cloud channels. So channeling to an Azure, channeling to an Amazon Web Services. Um, also adding other parties' assets that we then uh, make available towards the developers. And uh, the developers being able to not only develop their application, but also market it into, uh, into a marketplace that we offer them. So uh, that's the, the message to, that we have towards them. So it's not about only prototyping, it's not only about building, but it's helping them to industrialize, to scale, and to market their solution, and to, to sell their solution, and actually sell them to, again, other developers that will uh, add value again. So that's the kind of, uh, of uh, snapshots of the interfaces uh, they get there. So it's about the, the asset, the, which uh, kind of API, and um, how they can put it, uh, how the marketplace uh, looks like as well. Some, uh, some examples that we have been uh, putting into our marketplace recently. Also, we had interesting to, to mention there is our location-based services. So indeed, as well as a mobile network operator, we have a lot of information about, of course, aggregated uh, location information because we cannot sell individual uh, location-based information, but that can be accessed uh, by the uh, developers as well through this uh, very, same, uh, very same platform. Uh, just uh, two examples now on the on specific use cases uh, that we that we have put into the market uh, for uh, with with LoRa. So a, a classical one, but also one that we implemented uh, in Belgium is the the waste management. So with the issues of not knowing if the bins are filled and not knowing how to get the the most optimized uh, uh, the optimized way to to get those uh, those bins, so quite classical use case that we have been uh, implementing. Actually, this was a small movie, but it's a PDF version, so I have no movie here. You can <laughs> get it uh, through YouTube. So waste management proximus, you will get the movie, but I don't think it's an issue here. So I just uh, wanted to say indeed that we that we offer this uh, solution with our LoRa network and with those uh, building blocks. So it's about a sensor, our network, so it's about decrypting, about the partners there. Uh, Waylay uh, is a, a startup, a Belgian startup as well, with an IoT platform and Solvice that is optimizing uh, the traject. So together we offered uh, this solution to the waste management company. Another one to develop, pretty uh, important in Belgium as well, still many fuel tanks for heating, uh, heating the houses. So there as well, it's about optimizing the, fill, the, the filling the, the tanks. So what are the building blocks there? You have uh, in these, those sensors, the platform and the, 
the applications always the same uh, building blocks with uh, with our partners so where are we now so like i said uh, by the end of this year we will uh, cover the country uh, outdoor and in urban areas uh, indoor and deep indoor in function of the, the use cases um, we are uh, focusing on those uh, specific verticals and uh, we are uh, looking into 20, 2017 with, uh, to, towards the, the localization. So you may know that one of the nice features in LoRa is through triangulation doing some localization. Those are tests that are uh, being done now. So we see this in combination with other technologies because it's, it's a, the LoRa localization is a very cheap one, but uh, less, uh, less precise than a GPS uh, localization, for example. We, we, uh, we talk about 50 to 100 meter precision. So we, we see that with a combination of an accelerometer or uh, potentially a GPS, we can still get a low power consumption, but new, uh, a great, uh, great use case. So we announced indeed uh, a tracker that we put uh, into the market. So that's a device with an accelerometer a button, but at a very, uh, very interesting cheap price. So that's one of the key elements here of course it's it's the cost and the evolution of the ecosystem will bring this cost uh, even lower and uh, the roaming aspect as well is also uh, important being able when you target towards the uh, um, the, the 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 market the tracking the tracking market to be able certainly if you are active in a small country like ours to be able to cross uh, the border so technology wise so we have indeed our uh, 2G, 3G, 4G technologies, our LoRa today for the low power wide area. So we are looking towards uh, the future. So we, the 5G and the narrowband IoT, um, we are not considering that those are uh, completely competing technologies. So there is certainly an overlap, but we are convinced that there will be a market uh, for the different ones. So for example, markets that where the, the, the power is less, uh, less an issue like, uh, like electricity, electricity meters and where we need to be able to transport a bit more uh, data in narrowband IoT versus LoRa may be a better solution. So those are things that um, we, uh, we plan to, to test in 2017 and uh, in function of that take, uh, take our decisions. I think that making a choice would uh, somehow uh, take a part of the, the market away. So what we should not do as a telco, we should realize that uh, IoT is not only a market for the telcos. So there is a lot, a lot of IoT that is being done outside the telcos. And so uh, getting a presence inside the, the unlicensed market also gives you a possibility to address uh, this part of the market. So we should not only uh, be telco centric, I think here, when you're choosing your, uh, your technologies. So the conclusion towards, uh, towards our customers, so really convincing them, convincing them to serve the IoT wave. I think there is a lot, a lot to win uh, with uh, regards to processes in all uh, industries, but still we realized in 2016, it was still about, uh, with regards to IoT, still about evangelization of, of the customers. We now see the demands and the RFPs coming uh, massively, so I think that indeed 2017 will be a big, uh, big turning point with regards to that.